Growing up, young Christine Paulila was often made fun of and bullied because of her alopecia, which she was suffering from since kindergarten. Because of her condition, she wore a wig to school, and she also suffered from poor vision, which resulted in her having to wear thick glasses. Her classmates would make fun of her relentlessly, and this made her grow up with very low self-esteem. She preferred to be a wallflower rather than stand out in any social setting. But this would all change when Christine went to high school. She made friends with two popular students, Rachel Colorotis and Tiffany Raw. Because of this friendship, Christine became more confident, and in 2003 was even voted Miss Irresistible by her high school student body. It seems that Christine will finally have her life back on track, battling alopecia but not allowing her illness to hold her back. However, this was all short-lived, as on July 18, 2003, Christine and her then-boyfriend, Christopher Snyder, would shoot and kill four people, including her high school friends, Rachel and Tiffany. Hi everyone, today we'll be talking about the gruesome murders that happened in 2003. If you're interested in dark and mysterious stories, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on all notification buttons to stay updated on all of our latest videos. Let's continue. But first, let us back up for a moment and comb through Christine's early life. Christine was born on March 31st, 1986, in Long Island, New York to Lori, a stay-at-home mother, and Charles, a construction worker. Christine also had an elder brother. When Christine was two years old, her father was tragically killed in a construction accident. Following the death of her husband, Lori, Christine's mother, would turn to drugs to numb her pain. This would eventually lead to her losing custody of both her children to her parents. As mentioned earlier, Christine was in kindergarten when she was diagnosed with alopecia. So at a very young age, kids would make fun of her as she started losing all her hair, eyebrows and eyelashes. Christine was eventually reunited with her mother, who had overcome her drug addiction and remarried. The family then moved to Clear Lake City, Texas, a suburb of Houston, where Christine enrolled at Clear Lake High School. This was where she became more positive and confident, as she made friends and became popular amongst her schoolmates. In 2003, the same year where she was voted Miss Irresistible, Christine began a relationship with 21-year-old Christopher Snyder. The pair was madly in love, but Christine's mother and stepfather disapproved of Christopher. To make matters worse, Christine's two best friends, Rachel and Tiffany, also disapproved of him. The reason for their disapproval was not illogical, because Christopher was a drug addict and has an extensive criminal record. But Christine wanted to hear none of that, as she had just fallen so deeply in love for this amazing person. Soon, Christine's life took a turn for the worse as she started abusing drugs herself. It was as though Christine's life did a total 180 degree change. Her temper became more volatile and unpredictable. It was reported that Christine was prone to jealousy and after a fight with Christopher, Christine was left utterly enraged that she decided to spend a night on Christopher's family's home and threatened to kill his entire family. On the other hand, it was also reported by Laurie that Christopher isolated Christine from her friends and family and indicated that Christine was also sexually assaulted by Christopher. This is a classic case where the relationship is both violent and dysfunctional, with each party abusing one another. Throughout the tumultuous relationship, Christine and Christopher still stayed on as a couple, continuing their volatile relationship but it wouldn't be long before their violence turned outward towards their own social circle. On July 18, 2003, Christine and Christopher went to Tiffany's home in Clear Lake City. Also at the home were Rachel, Tiffany's boyfriend Marcus, and her cousin, Adobert. According to Christine's statement in court, Christopher and her planned to steal some drugs that were kept in the house. But Christopher got into an argument with Marcus, and this eventually led to the shootings. All four victims, Tiffany, Rachel, Marcus, and Adelbert were shot multiple times. Rachel, who managed to stay alive even after being shot, 
attempted to crawl to a phone to dial 911, was struck in the head multiple times with the butt of a 38 caliber revolver by Christine. Christine's attack was so extensive that she bashed Rachel's skull in. Rachel and Tiffany were also both shot in the crotch area. After the murders, Christine and Christopher would clean up the crime scene, leaving little to no evidence, and they left. Surprisingly, an hour after the murders, Christopher drove Christine to work, going about their daily lives as usual. Throughout this period, the police had nothing to work on, but they suspected that the killings were drug-related as Marcus was dealing drugs from the house. Evidence was sparse as the police only had some description of the suspects from neighbours living around the area. Christine and Christopher will continue their daily lives as a couple until in 2004 where Christopher was jailed in Kentucky for car theft and they broke up. Not long after, Christine will check herself into rehab in Curview, Texas, hoping to get clean. That was where she met Justin Rod, a heroin user, and not long after, the two started a relationship. Justin and Christine would eventually marry in March of 2005. All this while, Justin had absolutely no idea of Christine being a cold-blooded murderer. Around the time of their marriage, Christine came into a $360,000 trust left to her by her father. She would then use a portion of this money to buy an apartment. In July 2005, on the second anniversary of the murders, Christine saw a newscast about the still unsolved case. She started getting upset and worried upon seeing sketches of herself named as a suspect given by neighbours and confessed to Justin that she and her ex-boyfriend Christopher had committed the murders. Instead of going to the police, the couple then went into hiding. By November 2005, Christine and Justin were living in a motel in San Antonio, Texas, and for the next eight months, they were holed up in a room shooting up on heroin and cocaine. But Christine's life, as she knew it, would all come to a screeching halt. On July 8, 2006, police received an anonymous tip via Crime Stoppers regarding the murders. A male caller had told the police that he had been in rehab with Christine and had heard her admit to being a participant in the crime. Not long after, police tracked Christine down in San Antonio and arrested her on July 19, 2006. At the same time, Justin was also arrested as 70 vials of heroin were found in the couple's motel room. After being arrested by the police, Christine would initially deny killing her friends, while on the other hand, Justine stated that Christine had confessed to him that she was an active participant in the murders. Even mentioning that Christine told him that she had beaten Rachel to death with the butt of a gun. Eventually, Christine would crack and admitted to participating in the murders but placed all the blame on her ex-boyfriend Christopher. On July 21st, 2006, Christine and Christopher, who had not yet been apprehended, were charged with capital murder. Christine's bail was set at $500,000 as she was considered a flight risk. As for Christopher, in July 2006, he had moved to Greenville, South Carolina, where he was living with a woman he met online. After Christine's arrest that July, one of Christopher's family members called to inform him that police had issued a warrant for his arrest. This caused Christopher to become worried and panic, so nobody knew what he was about to do next. Acting on a tip that Christopher may have committed suicide, police went to Greenview and searched near an area where he was last seen. Police were then able to find his decomposing body in a heavily wooded area on August 5, 2006. It was later determined that Christopher had overdosed on prescription medication. On October 13, 2008, Christine was convicted of four counts of capital murder. As she had been a juvenile offender at the time of the killings, she was spared the death penalty. The following day, she was sentenced to life in prison. Christine filed an appeal on November 29, 2008 on the grounds that the trial court abused his discretion in setting her bail at $500,000. But an appeals panel decided that the court did not abuse his discretion, 
and affirmed Christine's original sentence. She has since filed additional appeals which have all been denied. At this moment, Christine is incarcerated at the Mountain View Unit in Gatesville, Texas and will be eligible for parole in 2046 when she will be 60 years old. Anyway guys, that's it for today. Drop a comment down below on what you think of this video. If you have other stories you wish for me to cover, leave a comment and a link for me to look deeper into it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos. I'll see you in our next campfire story. Thank you for watching.